Hey guys, I have here a PCI Express expansion card that allows for the installation of two NVMe solid state drives into a single PCIe slot. Now this server already has two NVMe drives installed, however they're installed in two separate slots, and I'd like to consolidate them into a single card so that I can free up one of those slots for other uses. Now this card looks fairly straightforward. You may be thinking, okay, just pop in your drives, plug the card in the slot, and you'll be good to go. Unfortunately, like most things in life, it's not that straightforward. Each of these NVMe drives is technically a separate PCIe device requiring four lanes per card. And you'll see this card fits in an X8 slot, meaning eight PCIe lanes. In order for this card to work properly, we need to tell our motherboard, hey, check for multiple devices in that single PCIe slot. Otherwise, if you plug this in, you'll only be able to see one of your two drives. And that's called PCI Express bifurcation. Bifurcation is just a fancy word that means to take something and divide it into two branches or two parts. And that's going to be a feature your motherboard needs to support. You can't simply plug this card into any motherboard, any slot, and expect it to work. Your motherboard needs to support PCI Express bifurcation and support it on the specific slot you'd like to plug your card into. So this server is running a Supermicro X10 SRI-F motherboard. We're going to take a look at the layout of this board, how the PCIe lanes are divided up, and figure out where we're going to plug this card in. Now, Supermicro doesn't exactly make this easy, so please bear with me through the explanation. So here we have a Supermicro X10 SRI-F motherboard. We have six PCIe slots. They are labeled slot one through slot six. These first two slots are PCI 2.0 and they tie in through the south bridge, so we're just going to ignore those two slots. We're gonna take a look at slots three through six. These are all PCI Express 3.0. Now this motherboard and the CPU supports 40 PCIe lanes, and those 40 lanes are going to be divided up into these four slots. Here we have the block diagram layout for this motherboard, and this can be found on page 16 of the user's manual. As I mentioned, this motherboard and CPU have 40 PCIe lanes. And this particular motherboard divides those up into three ports. So we see port one here has eight PCI lanes going to slot three. Port two here has 16 PCIe lanes going to slot six. And then we have port three, which is split between three slots. So we have three A and B, which provide eight PCIe lanes to slot four. We have three C, which is providing four PCIe lanes to slot five. And then we have 3D, which is providing four PCIe lanes to our LAN or our Ethernet controller. And then down on the bottom right here, you see the PCIe 2.0 slots that we're not going to worry about. So obviously I don't want to divide up slot six. That's an X16 slot. I'd like to put a GPU in that slot. Additionally, if I were to divide up an X16 slot, I'd only be using eight of those 16 lanes. So I could divide up slot three on port one since I have eight lanes there. I could divide up slot four since I have eight lanes there. I cannot use slot five since that only has four lanes. And obviously 3D is out of the question since that's going to the LAN controller and it's only four lanes as well. So realistically speaking, my only options for this particular card are to put it in slot three, which is port one, or to put it in slot four, which is port three A and B. So now we're in the BIOS for this motherboard. Configuration for the PCI Express bifurcation is going to be under the advanced tab chipset configuration, north bridge. It's going to be called the IIO configuration, IIO1 configuration. And you see here settings are referring to ports one, ports two, ports three. Additionally, some of the settings refer to slot three, slot six, slot four, and five. So you can clearly see why this is a bit confusing. And uh, that's where this block diagram comes into play to help figure out which of these specific options you want. So I'll likely use slot three, which if you remember by looking at our motherboard, that was the first of the four PCI three slots. Slot three is on port one. So if we look at our BIOS, we'll go up to port one here. And the bifurcation options for port one are X4, X4, and X8. In order for this card to work, we need X4, X4. So this option is telling us that this eight lane slot is now being divided into X4 and X4, two separate four lane slots. So if we take a look at some of the other options here, we have slot four, which is on port three. So if I go into port three here, we have more options to choose from since port three has 16 lanes. But remember, four of those lanes are already in use by our LAN controller, and four of the lanes are going to a completely separate slot. So the only realistic option for this slot are to use X4, 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 
You can see how this quickly becomes confusing and it really helps to have this block diagram handy to take a look at what you're uh, setting up here. My decision is to put this into slot three, which is port one. And in the BIOS, I've configured port one to be X4, X4. So I'm gonna go ahead and press F4, which is save and exit. All right, so I've now reset and booted back into the BIOS just because I wanted to show you that uh, now that we have port one set to X4, X4, uh, an additional option has now become available here where we can set the link speed of port 1B. So port 1A is the first four lanes of slot three and port 1B is the second four lanes of slot three. I don't need to make any changes to this here. However, I just wanted to show you that uh, once you set the bifurcation option on one of these ports, you can make changes to the second part of the slot, which has now become a separate link. So I've now got both of the NVMe drives installed in this single card, and I'm gonna go ahead and slide that into port three. The server is now booted back up, so we can do an LL dev NVMe star. And you see we have both of our NVMe drives detected successfully. And since this is a mirrored array, let's also check that and make sure that's functional. MDADM detail dev MD1. And I see we have both of our NVMe devices here. It's showing active sync and the state is clean. So we are good to go. All right guys, so server's back online. Everything's running great. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please hit that like button before you go. And thanks for watching.